Welcome back to the lab. Steve Gibson is here, our security guy. He does a podcast with me called Security Now. Every Thursday we talk about uh, security. We talked about perfect paper passwords at great length, but I thought it'd be fun to get him on and talk in a kind of a shorter synopsis of what exactly these are and, and, and why you invented this. Um, we've talked before about about electronic tokens of different sorts. Right. This is one that Verisign makes. I, where I use this too. You, you, got, you gave me one of these, yep. which is really, they're about 40 bucks. The, and they're not cheap. You've got a little button there, and it, no generates, it generates a unique six-digit code every time you press the button. So the new code can be used as a password, but it's only good for 30 seconds. It's a, well, no, this one is not time-based. This oh, okay. one is sequence-based. There are the little football-shaped ones. So this ones. is good as long as... Until you use it. As long as you don't use it. And then as soon as you use it, you need to press again. So and get it's a, a one-time one password. Oh, that's You can cool. only use it one time. Now, the advantage of that is even if somebody's watching you or you've got a keystroke logger or they're monitoring you, once you use it, it's no good. Exactly. And, and that's the key because... The, the you know username and password logons have the problem with keystroke loggers. Right. We've we've talked about how insecure wireless keyboards are that it, that it's easy to to sniff them. So what I wanted when I was designing a system for GRC's use, which is now gone pretty much global because it's been implemented in every language there is, and in all the software <laughs> every computer language every computer language yeah. all the software is free at grc.com/ppp. So for example, webmasters could implement this system for their well, own logins. Here, here's the issue. You know, you could give everybody who works for you one of these and you could implement that system. I wish all banks would use these, for instance. But there's an easy, cheap way you, you did it with this. Instead of having a card, you use this chart of pa one-time use passwords. Well, the other problem with any of these tokens is that you have to have a relationship with VeriSign or right. some authentication service. So you could easily set this up. Now, when I use this, 8N equals 3, I just cross it off? Yes, the idea is that, that end users can print these little password cards okay, okay. on their own machine. Fold it up, so put it in your wallet. Exactly. It's the same size as the VeriSign. And there's 210 passwords there mm -hmm. that are, th this gives you one of a million possible passwords. Okay. This is one of almost 17 million. <laughs> so even though they're only four characters, because they're alphanumeric, not just they're mixed, numeric, they're mixed, it's yeah. even stronger than the normal password. Now. I understand why this is a good idea, but how does the server know which password you're going to use? Well, the idea is it knows, for example, you know, column A, row one, then it goes to B, C, D. So it moves along sequentially, never asking you for one that you've used before, only moving forward. Oh, so it'll ask you, say, I want to see C6? Yes, and, and you're the only one who knows what C6 is, Got the it. magic combination at that intersection, because it worked with you to print those. So you would have to implement it on both the server and give and you know then have the user before they went on the road print this out the server would know who the user is would know what their card says yes. and could ask you after you log in this would be in addition to a login you, you right? give them your username first yep. and then the next and so that identifies you then the next thing it asks for is your password and this passcode so the same thing as this verisign card when i log into ebay or uh, paypal for instance i'll use a username and password and then it it will say, okay, now give me your six key security code. My son the, uh, last night wanted to bid on eBay and he called me up and said, dad, what's a six key security code? And I said, six number of security code. I said, well, I happen to have it here. And I didn't mind giving it to him because it's only good that one yeah, time. He could never use it again. <laughs> Ah, gotcha. So that's the same idea behind this. Same idea here. These are th th this whole system, however, is free and open source at GRC.com. You don't have to have a relationship with Verisign. Now, what if I lose this card? Ah, uh, that's the other cool thing. Is first of all, you can uh, these these are numbered one, two, and three. They go on literally forever. There's no so, list. No, no so you could just them. say, "Give me uh, four, five, and six, and just wipe out those three. Or if if you thought maybe somebody saw your card, mm -hmm. or if it was out of your control, they might have xeroxed it. Right. You're able to obsolete all of those and go to the next step so that have never server, been seen before. Give me some new ones. Yep. Now, you, at the time, you, when you're printing these, you have to verify your person, your, your, yourself some other way, right? Exactly. Very so securely, maybe with a secret name or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Something that would be burdensome to right. normally use right. because, the, the, but because these are so simple and easy. Now, both of these systems are what we call uh, two-factor authentication, right? Multi-factor. Multi-factor. Actually, you, it's you, a third user factor. Username, password, and, and... Yeah, the idea being something you know and something you have. Only if you have this paper right. that proves you have 
have the paper because that's the only way you would know the next code in the sequence. We're starting to see secure sites use these more and more, and it's a really good idea. It is the future of internet. We're needing more security for logon. We're needing to be to be have some protection from hackers who are trying to get into our accounts. Right. This is a high tech way that requires uh, a third party like Verisign to implement. Uh, but a lot of bank. I, I'm, I tell you, I love it that eBay and PayPal you just I'm, you just have in your wallet. I keep it all the time, and I wish that my bank would of course, start. That's using in this. my wallet too. But this and is no another battery. way to do it, and it's free, low tech, easy to implement. And as Steve said, there's Perl, there's Python, there's ASP, there's a million there's different ways DPP to do it. There's and, yeah. and C plus plus dot yeah. net. All that software is open source and available at GRC. So if you want to f implement this on your system, uh, go to oh, GRC.com. Uh, Pam uh, add-on. Oh, yeah. So Mac users are able to use it to log on to their Macintosh. It's called the pluggable authentication module. Right. So a lot of systems use Pam. This can work with Pam and as Linux well. And Linux too. Right? Yeah. So uh, grc.com slash ppp. But we also thought it'd be good, not even if you're never going to use this, to know about these kinds of multi-factor authentications, because I think this is the future. Security is a good thing. It is a good thing, as we well know. If you want to know more about security, go to grc.com, listen to our podcast, or download some of Steve's very useful tools like Shields Up that help help you be more secure. And don't forget his great hard drive maintenance and recovery utility spin right now in its third decade. <laughs> third decade. Wow. It's as old as I am. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, it's a lot older. Nothing's oh, I'm as old a lot as older. you are. Somebody's <laughs> old. <laughs>